Hello everybody and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to build the Tileable Villager trading booth. This is a contraption used for trading with disposable villagers, so you will need an infinite villager breeder to bring villagers into this trading booth. And what it does is it separates the villagers into their own booths with a button at the top to reject them when you have finished trading and reset the booth so another villager can be brought up here for trading. Now this happens because they have water at the head height of the villager so when they go under it they will bob up and down in the water and swim up and land on the pressure plate at the top and then this will power the dispenser and remove the water stopping the other villagers from coming up to the trading booth. Now when we press the button at the top to reject them a double piston extender pushes them into the hole at the front and then the signal is passed down through a delay and around into the dispenser again. So when the villager is rejected, the dispenser is activated moments later, meaning the booth is ready for use again. So this video is only going to show you how to build the trading booth. This will not work without an infinite villager breeder. So on the screen there is a link to Tango Text tutorial and also a video by DocM covering villager trading, which is worth watching if you are new to villager trading and want to learn more about it. Now before we start the tutorial I want to talk about a couple of flaws with this design that I have discovered whilst working with it on Hermitcraft. So after using this design and getting used to it I've grown to really like it. It's very convenient having all of the booths right next to each other and also overall this thing is really reliable. However it has a couple of inefficiencies and flaws that I wanted to point out. Now these first inefficiencies they really don't mean anything because we're working with infinite villagers here and they're really minor issues. So first of all, when a villager goes underneath the water here, there is a very slim chance of about 3% that its head won't bob into the water and then it will go over to the next one in which it is very likely that that time its head will bob into the water. So that really doesn't um, affect this at all, but I thought I'd point it out. And the same goes for the next thing right here. When a villager comes down onto this ice, which is needed to move it into the next water stream, there is a very slim chance that it will stand on the ice. And if that does happen, then another villager will come along before long and knock them both into the next water stream. Now there is also a very slim chance that when a villager goes into the water here that another one will follow it up directly behind it and manage to go up to the top at the same time. So you can actually have two villagers in the training booth at the top here. Now this again, very low percent chance of this happening, probably like 2 or 3%, but if you use this a lot you will see it from time to time. And when you have two villagers up the top here, they will both actually stand here and one of them won't fall down into the hole at the bottom. So you can actually keep trading with them. Now depending on how they're standing, you can always access the one at the front and sometimes the one behind. And then when you press the button to reject them, the double extending piston will actually push both of them into the hole and then the thing will reset and be fine. And the last flaw here is the one that you're probably actually going to see affect your trading system the most. Now on occasion when the villager gets pushed off by the double piston extender due to how it's standing on the pressure plate it's there for slightly too long and this is powering the dispenser below. So when the signal travels around through the delay from the back and it gets to that dispenser if it's still powered then it's not going to put the water back in front which means that booth can no longer be used and there is no villagers standing here. Now this can easily be fixed. If you notice one isn't getting villagers into it, you can look down below. You can see if there's water in the bucket. If there is, then all you need to do is press the button at the top and that will reset it and put water back into the bit down below. So let me show you that again. You just press it and the water will reappear. Now one way you can avoid this problem, it happens very rarely with three repeaters. If you add a fourth repeater here, then it should pretty much never happen. But that is a problem it does occur, but you can just easily fix it by pressing the button at the top. So enough talking about this. I'm sure if you're thinking of building this, you'll want to see it in action. So let me give you a demonstration. Now over here is where you would have your infinite villager breeder, bringing them up to this point right here where we just have a dispenser and spawn eggs for this demonstration. So I'm going to spawn a couple of these and you're going to see them go through. Now they'll do derpy stuff like that one is doing there. That's just the server and the client not talking to each other and making it look like the villager is elsewhere. And you can see the first two that we've spawned have gone into the first two booths. Now they're half in the ground at the moment. Um, at this point you can still trade with them and if you relog they will appear like they are on top which is what I'll actually do right now. And so I log back in you can see they're actually standing on top. Now let's say we don't want to trade with these guys just press the button at the top and the water will get reset down below and then you can send through more villagers and they will get sucked up the top again. 
So let's start the tutorial. This is what we're going to be building right here. There are two slices here. We have the trading slice where the villager goes up to the booth at the top and then we have the wall slice that goes in between. Now for some of you this is the tutorial right there. You could look at that and build it but I'm still going to go through and actually show you how to build it step by step. Now you want to start off with a free wide segment. We're going to build one trading booth first of all. That's going to be in line with this bit right here. And then we have walls on either side. So based on how you build these side by side and expand them, you're always going to have one more wall than you do the trading area because you're going to need the extra one on the edge. Now this hole right here represents where the villagers go when you get rid of them. They need to go 16 blocks away from any other villagers before you kill them. So you could have a 16 block drop down into lava or you could put them into water and transport them somewhere else to be killed. Now you might also want to build this flush with the floor so if you're thinking of clearing out an area to do this then you're going to need to come up by six blocks up to this height right here. So to build this you're going to need these resources. For the slice that goes either side of your trading slice you will need 28 blocks and a half slab and then for the trading slice you need a pressure plate, two signs, a dispenser and a bucket of water to go in it and then 23 building blocks, a half slab, a button, two redstone torches, four redstone repeaters, seven redstone, a block of redstone, a piston, two sticky pistons and then another water source. So we will start off with where the villagers get sent when we get rid of them we're going to put three blocks either side of that on these three sides and then back here we're going to place a block, put a torch on the side of it, put a block above it with another torch on top of that and then place two blocks on either side like so. Then we will go back by one block and up by one, place a sign on that and then either side of that place two blocks. Then we're going to place two blocks here, one at the back, put redstone on top of those three blocks and then last of all we can put three repeaters down here and set them all to the fourth setting. So for the next step we are going to place the dispenser on top of this torch so it faces towards us. So get in a position like this. You can see it faces towards us. Then you can put your bucket of water in there. Then above that you want to place a block and on the side of that block you're going to put a sign. And then opposite the sign we need a block. So two blocks there. And the other side of that is where we're going to put a block of redstone. And now all we need to do is fill in all of the space around it. So all of this right here that I'm filling in you just do with regular blocks and then you leave a gap at the front here for the village to fall down in and then you build the platform over here for you to stand on. So for the last step we're going to place our half slabs across the front we're going to put blocks around the side like this and then over here we're going to place a couple of temporary blocks so that we can go down and place a sticky piston that faces into the redstone block then we can remove that on top of that we need to place a sticky piston and a regular piston in front of it then put down the pressure plate here put the water source block underneath that piston and then you can just place down a few more blocks like this then we need the ones that are going to go all the way across the top so all the way like this and then above here you can place a couple of blocks as well if you want to a couple on the side and then put your button to activate this at the top place down three pieces of redstone a repeater on the second setting and then another piece of redstone here so now that we've built one trading booth, when you build the next one to it, all you have to do is build these two slices here. So if I go ahead and build the other ones right here, I'll then show you how to do the water streams underneath. So now I'm going to show you where to put the water stream and I am guilty of missing a few blocks in the tutorial here. These are the only ones that I've missed though, I have checked and it's pretty obvious to see what you need to do there. So this is where your villagers are going to come up. So somewhere around here is the beginning of your water stream and then you want to fill in these blocks right here and then place your water at this bit here where the villagers come up. So at some point this stream is going to end. Now you need to place a sign below and between where these other signs are. So you can't put a sign here directly after where it's ended. Always has to be in between those other ones and when you've done that you want to replace the block below it with an ice block and then you can start your water stream over again which is now going to flow out and destroy all of my redstone. So there is one last thing for you to do that is to activate all of this. If we go down the bottom you can see here that there is no water above our water stream so if you press the button on each of these then we will activate all of the dispensers and if we go down below you can now see the water is in place and this thing is ready to use. So that is it for this tutorial. If you have enjoyed it, please do give it a like and help support the channel. It is always appreciated and there is a schematic available for download in the description box of this bit over here and this bit here as well. So as always, thank you very much for watching 
and I will catch you next time.